Yeah, no, no squeaking in the peanut gallery, please. I'm on? Okay. Um, I can't see it on my stream, but I'm sure it'll pop up. Yay, there I am. Are you out there yet, guys? Can I see me? <gasps> no, you're still on countdown as far as the thing goes. Right. It's because there's a delay. Okay. Um, I can't see it on my stream, but I'm sure it'll pop up. Okay, guys, I'm here. Hi. Obviously, I'm having an out-of-body experience as far as the delay goes. I need to turn my thing to mute, though, or I'm going to be hearing me talking about me to someone else. So, right, you're on. Okay, I'm going to wait a few seconds for a few others to join us. Um, as you can see by the whole mess on my table here, I have a heck of a lot to share with you today. This is one of my favourite subjects, so I'm going to be quite in-depth about it. Um, we only have an hour, so I'm going to steamroll all the way through this, and I do apologise if I don't get round to answering all your questions. We have the magic mystery voice in the corner, that if there's anything burning question about pipe flowers and raw icing comes up, I will try and answer it on the spot. If not, I will try and get online this evening and actually answer your questions there. So please forgive me if I don't get to everything. Okay, say something that Ian knows you're here. Oh, where is Ian? Little Ian's probably taking a bathroom break. Okay, so things... What's this say? Okay, so I'm just reading the comments as they're flying up, guys. Okay, I'm going to make a start in about two minutes because obviously we've got a bit of a delay going on and I want to make sure everyone catches up with us. So I'm pleased to announce that... Oh, there's little Ian. Oh, he's outside. Ian, stop moving. Hi, little Ian. Um, we're doing... We're well in, well in excess now. We've got, I believe, just over 14,000 members, which I think is absolutely amazing when you reckon we only started in the end of February. And thank you so much, guys. It's been wonderful working with you. And we've got doctors galore now, and we've got people helping people all in a positive, creative, constructive way, which is fabulous. So let me get on with some stuff. Okay, as I said, today I've got a lot to get through. I've got, I think, 14 piping bags here with all different colours in. We're going to do lots of different things, but I'm quite excited to say that our sponsors, which is KTSU Designs, have actually come up and put a few things together us as well, because I want to make this quite special. Now, as you may or may not know, I wrote two books on pipe flowers, so I sort of kind of know what I'm doing. Yes, I piped them in raw icing. Now, book number one, which was this one, is now out of print. I don't know whether it's going to be reprinted, but it's out of print. And with that in mind, we've got a bit of a special for you. So let's pop that down out of harm's way. So the wonderful people at KTC Designs have actually said that they're going to give away three sets. The number one book that I've just talked about to you, the book is signed. And then we've got Border Inspirations 1 and 2, my award-winning book. Remember, it won the Golden Tears Award in New York last year. And I believe it's its anniversary this weekend. I'm sure it's this weekend. So very excited about that. We have three sets of those to give away, and I'll tell you how to deal with them and how to get them in a minute. So, right. Me being me, I have no memory at this time of day, so I'm going to read what Katie Sue has told me to read, just so I give you all the correct information, because if I mislead you, I'm going to be shocked. So, um, the sponsors of Cake Doctor, which Katie Sue Designs, have a fantastic competition exclusive for Cake Doctor's members. That's you guys, because of course, not everyone can watch this, we have to accept you as a member. Um, if you go over to www.ktsudesigns.com forward slash newsletter and periodically we'll pop, pop it under the screen so you can actually see what is there. And if you sign up for their newsletter, what we'll do is we will select two new subscribers who will receive both books. And in fairness to those who are already subscribers to the newsletter, we'll choose one of the existing members to also have receive a copy of each of the books. It'll be done randomly and it'll be done for anyone across the globe. We will ship them wherever you are. We will, however, if you're chosen, need your mailing address, obviously. This this giveaway ends at 5.45 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time on 13th of June, which is tomorrow. So you've got 23 hours and 45 minutes before it ends. So that's that. I'm happy about that because that means you can actually have printed copies of what I'm gobbing on about. Right. One of the other things I need to suit. Um, we have a brand new doctor. Um, Shannon Bond. Hi, Shannon. Shannon Bond is going to take over our extensive knowledge of buttercream. 
Um, Shannon, I believe, is actually based in America. And Shannon, if you're out there, give us a little bit of a wave. Um, probably the first time you're going to see a bit of information related to Cake Doctor from Shannon is we've been approached by the fabulous American Cake Decorating magazine who want to periodically focus on Cake Doctor. So I'm like, wow, we're out there doing some good, guys. So um, periodically you'll see a Cake Doctor article or a Cake Doctor feature um, arrive in that magazine and the first one you're going to see is in the buttercream issue which will be coming up I'm not sure when it's launched but when it comes up and you're going to see in there Shannon Bond James Bond Shannon Bond sorry Shannon is actually going to be writing all the answers to certain questions on buttercream there's a very happy about that and happy about reaching as far as American Kate decorating so Kate Doctor can help more people so that's that dealt with Right, let's get on to the subject I'm happy about. We're going to talk about pipe flowers. I'm going to do them in raw icing, not buttercream, because I want to do smaller flowers for you. And I have lots and lots and lots of requests. Now, um, the books were actually published by B. Dutton Publishing, which is part of Squire's Kitchen here in the UK. Now, the contract I signed for the books said that I couldn't reiterate any of the piping skills in there in video or in print because they then became exclusive from me in the books. However, I have had special permission from them, thank you very much, to actually do a few selections from there just to show you the skills that were in them. So I'm very thank you to both B. Dutton Publications and Squire's Kitchen for letting me do that. Thank you guys, it's lovely that you've allowed me to do that and I can break that contract a little bit. So we've got people flooding in. We do have people flooding in. Right, first of all, I have my list here. So what am I working with? I'm working with raw icing and the raw icing, the raw icing I'm used using today is not a premix it's actually the raw icing that we made and you have a video of it made it's on the cake doctor blog so you need to go to www.cakedoctor which is one word dot blog that's where this recipe is and there's actually a video of me doing it as well and i know little ian has promised me that that link or that video will appear in cake doctor again shortly so just know that that's the one I've used. I've used it and I've not watered it down. I've used it at full strength because if you're doing any pipe flowers, you want the firmer consistency to be able to keep the definition in the flower. <clears throat> because if your icing is too soft, obviously you're going to have it. It's all going to go Mr. Blobby and melt. Or when we come to pipe on toothpicks later on, it'll slide down the toothpick. I will show you remedies for that. But know that you want to work as firm as, as you can, but you don't need to hurt your hands. You don't need to burst the bags. Um, a quick side note, wherever I put that, a quick side note is all of the colours I've used are either liquid colours or dust colours, because if you use a paste or a gel, it's going to have a glycerin or a glyceride in it, and that means that when your flowers dry, they're likely to crumble or break because of that in the mixture. So use dust or use liquid colours. I do know some people who use airbrush colours, but different brands are made with different products. So make sure you read those first. <clears throat> Bit of a frog in the throat. So what are we on to now? Um, piping tips, right. I've pulled out some humongous piping tips in petal shapes. And I want the close-up camera now. You will see we've got this close-up happening. We normally have an overhead, but because of the detail and level of detail I want to share with you, Ian's kindly moved it down. So as you can see, we can really see things up close. Now, these are piping tips for petals. Now, these are straight piping tips. If you're buying petal tips and you're left or right-handed, you need to buy a left-handed piping tip or a right-handed piping tip. You'll see denoted on the side, because I'm going to be using 56s. A PME 56L is for left-hander, PME 56R is for right-hander, and it means that the petal tip would curve in a certain angle. These are actually Wilton piping tips, and they're straight. I want to say this is a 127, and this is a 125, and later on we're going to be working with a 12 four. Now, parts of the piping tip. So firstly, we have, let's get one of these. There you go. We have a rounded end of the teardrop and a pointed end. The pointed end is normally the top edge of any petal. So if you're piping a rose, this is the top. If you're piping a blossom, that's the outside edge. The fatter bit is where a petal would join the stem. So if we have a stem with a flower, this would be the fatter part, and that's there because it needs to support. There's one or two 
times when we turn the piping tip the other way up and it's when we pipe daisies or gerberas and I'm going to be trying to do some daisies for you later on so you'll see where this roundness here comes into play. So that's that. All of the piping tips except for the large one are going to be PME super tubes. Um, there are Arteco, there are other brands out there. I would say choose the ones that work best for you. I just have kept them all even because I know that um, the PME piping tips are found internationally and they're a good robust piping tip. But you may already have several piping tips in your collection. Just need to dig them out and have a little look at them. So what are we doing first here then? Uh, so if I've got a piping tip, I need to pipe my flowers onto something. So little Ian, if we can go back to the close-up, please. I want to talk about a few things. This is a flower nail. It is not a baking core. Baking cores look very similar, but they don't have this upturned lip. To be honest with you, if you're stuck for a baking core, you can probably use a metal piping nail. The trouble with some of these is, as you can see, there's a there's a join there. In the older versions, you sometimes find once you've washed the nail a few times, it'll go rusty. You don't want to do like food. But I mean, I've used a metal one for years. Just make sure that you keep it really dry. If I've washed it, I usually put it straight into the oven to warm so it, it burns off all of the water. Um, normally, nowadays, you will find plastic versions and they come in several different sizes. Now, when I'm actually talking to students who are piping flowers, all of the flower nails are pretty much similar. Why would I buy one this small when I can buy one this big? If I'm piping small flowers, I can pipe small flowers on this and this. If I want to pipe big flowers, I can't pipe them on this one, guys. So if you're going to invest in one piping flower nail, then choose this one. Okay? There is this one you'll see occasionally which is curved, which is also for flowers. So I'm going to put these to one side for a second because there's something that gets confused. Sometimes you will see things like this out there. Ian, where have you gone? There you go. Things like this that are shaped. This is not a flower nail. This is a basket nail, which is a completely another set of piping. You'll get them. They have a half curve. They have a pyramid. They have a dome. But anything that looks similar to this is a basket nail. Now, there are one other thing that I've used, and I used in the book and we'll be using later on, are these. They normally come in two parts, and these are called a lily nail. Um, there are versions that only have this part, but the ones I like to use have got two parts, and you'll see later on why I like them like that. So that's an introduction to all of the lily nails. Um, one last thing we need to talk about is obviously if I'm piping onto something, I'll either be piping onto wax paper. Some people use silicone paper. I cut mine into squares. I buy it on the roll. You can buy them pre-cut. And the other thing I'll use is tin foil. Just regular kitchen foil off the roll. If you can get heavy duty, all the better, because the heavy duty um, foil is a little more robust. Let's put all that back where we're going. Right, hello everyone out there. Hello Noreen, Noreen, Bev. Where's it? Oh, good grief, there are some people. Amy, someone called Susan, Wendy, Susan, Cynthia. Hello from Buenos Aires, Anita. Seha, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, Seha. Um, lots and lots of people to join us. Selena, Selena, why do I know your name? I know your name for some reason. Okay, right, so we're all ongoing, we're moving. I haven't dropped out. The IT bugs, knock on wood, are leaving us alone tonight. So, next thing we need to do. Right, so let's talk about... Um, the most basic thing. If you've got flowers, you need to have leaves. So let's bring this in because I can pipe onto this and then lift it up for you. Now, I've pulled out two piping tips here that are leaf tips. One is an enormous one and one is the one I use each time. Now, this is number 52. This is number 53. Now, as you can see, the 52 is pretty small to describe, which is why I'm going to show you on the bigger one. When you look at a leaf tip, you'll find that it's got two larger V's, one on either side. And then if you look really closely, which you may not be able to see, there's a little notch at the top and bottom. When I teach students to actually pipe leaves, I tell them, think about a crocodile smile. If you look at this piping tip, this to me is the open mouth of a crocodile. If the crocodile puts his chin down, when you squeeze it, you will end up with a leaf. If you turn it on the side, you will not get a leaf. So let's show you exactly what I mean. So hopefully that's wiped off. There's my towel gone. There you go. So if I rest my piping tip down on a surface and I don't move the piping tip, I squeeze the bag until I get a leaf shape, stop squeezing and gently pull away, I end up with a leaf. 
If I touch it down and I move in and out and pull away, I end up with a leaf. Now this bag actually gives you some pretty big leaves. Now you'll note there's two different colours already in there. I'll put a pale green and a lighter green. I'll show you later on when I use a clear plastic bag actually how I did that. So that's the bigger one. If I was doing a buttercream cake, that's probably the size I would use. But normally I use something in the range of this one here. Well, this is the 52. So same method as before. So as you can see, I just squeezed and pulled away. And then I moved in and out, which gives you the fluted one. If you want to do something like a fern, you can touch it down and draw a shape. Or if you move slowly and draw the shape, it will ruffle. So as you can see there. So lots of different things you can do with one of these. But this is just a bit of an introduction as to what we can do with them. So let's put the leaves to one side again now. So let's move on again. So sticky hands. You see me going under the table. I've got a little wash bowl under there full of water. So that's what I've disappeared to. So the first thing we're going to do is the absolute basic. And that'll be a five petal blossom. Now I've chosen colours hopefully that you can see on screen. I'll do it step by step. I'll do individual little pieces. And I'll move on to the next one for you. So I'm going to select a, a piping nail. A flower nail. And I'm going to get a bit of wax paper. And let's see. Let's use pink. Pink's pretty predominant colour when it comes to piping. So first thing I need to do is I need to stick paper to here. So I'm going to give that a little squeeze and that will attach my paper. Now, one thing I must say, if you're a left-hander, you're going to have to do all of this in the reverse direction than I'm doing. Sorry about that, but I can't do two videos, one left and one right. Just know that you have to pipe in different directions. Now, the fattest part of this piping tip is in the centre. So if I keep this almost parallel to the flower nail and I squeeze, move out, turn the flower nail slightly and move back in, I'll get a little tiny teardrop shape. The shape I'm creating, and I'll do one on the side there, is that shape. It's only a little tiny teardrop. Okay, so let's take that off of there so it's not confusing the issue. So I've done one. I'll come in next to it. I'll pipe another one. And another one. Now, for some reason, people struggle with five. Um, if you're struggling with five, do six, because symmetry works for people. Okay, so we've got number four. Now, if I keep my piping tip flat, I'm going to wipe off number one. So I tend to tip my piping tip up a bit to pipe the last one. So that gives me five. And then I just come in with a little touch of a different color. I've chosen orange here, just to pop a little center into it. And that gives me my basic flower. Now, if you can use these, use up any spare roll icing you want. This is a great way to use it because if you've got spare roll icing, you can pipe these. And once you pipe them and they're fully dried, you can put them in a dust-free, damp-free box. And as you can see, they're good for at least a year. They're made of sugar. Sugar is a natural preservative. Just make sure it's not an airtight box. If it's an airtight box, you could build up condensation and then you'll ruin them. So let's do that one more time for you. So again, the fat end is in and I'm doing individual petals. So I'm turning and in, turning in, turning in, turning in. The last one I tip upward slightly. And as you can see, that gives me my first blossom. And if I take a little dot of color, put it in the middle, that finishes off my blossom for me. Now, you could use bigger piping tips and do the same technique and just have bigger flowers. So just as a little example of what you would do with one of those, let's take it off my hand. So if I bring in an ice cookie, I apologize, we did ice cookies the other day and we had a bit of a meltdown on the ice cookie front because what happened, the gremlins got involved. So let's take a few of those blossoms then, take a small piping tip, if I pipe a couple of leaves on here in opposite directions, one in there, one in there, I can just quite easily take a couple of blossoms, Let's put one more leaf there, and quite simply, I finished the cookie off. Oh, I've knocked the border off. Let's just pop a little border back on there again. There you go. So as you can see, quite simply, now that's a really basic five petal blossom. And as you can see, once you group them together, it doesn't matter if they're slightly 
not symmetrical, if the petals aren't all the same colour, they really do make a cute little cookie. So let's move that one down to the front. Now where are my F2 next? Now, another um, flower you could do that has very much the same technique but a slight twist to it would be a primrose. Now a primrose is traditionally yellow in my book, so let's pull in the yellow. So this again is a number 56R. And what I'm doing is, there's my piece of wax paper, there's my little dot, put that on there. Now, when I pipe this petal, I'm not going to do just a little teardrop shape, I'm going to pipe a heart. So when I pipe, I go out, come in a little bit, and then back in again. So I'm piping a little tiny heart shape. Not sure, actually, if I brought this nail in, I can just show you on the nail itself what that shape is. So I'm going out, I come in a little bit, and I come back out, and it gives me a little tiny heart shape. So if I do five of those, let's bring this back in again. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Now when I put the centre into it, I've used exactly the same technique, but I've now made a primrose. Now, we're going to talk later on about dusting raw icing when it's dry as well. Yes, you can, and yes, you can put some dust into it to give it more character. I could have put two different colours of icing in this bag as well, and maybe had a darker centre, but I was going for a primrose, and a primrose is usually yellow. If you go for a primula, you'll find they actually maybe have more than one colour in them, and they do come in different colours as well, so that's good. Right, before I move on again, don't forget guys, we do have the giveaway happening for the next, well, until 5.45 on the 13th of June. Um, you need to go to www.ktcdesigns.com. Ah, I've lost a bit of paper. Oh, it's at the bottom. There you go. Thank you, little Ian. Save me again. Newsletter. Go there. Sign up for the newsletter. What you'll have is two new sign-ups. Um, we'll randomly choose two of you and you'll receive a signed copy of my flower book, which is now out of print, so lucky you for getting one, and Border Inspirations 1 and 2, and one existing person who's already signed up, because we wanted to be fair here, guys, you'll actually get one as well. And remember, it's anywhere in the world, so don't think, oh, I live in the outer blah, 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 I can't get one. Yeah, once you've been chosen, we'll contact you, give us your address, and we'll get it shipped out to you probably within about the next seven days, but don't hold us to that because it's busy here at KT Sue Designs and Kate Doctor. So, right, we're going to move on. Let's look at the next one. Okay, we've looked at some basic techniques, okay? We've looked at that petal shape. So if I... Let's see if I've got the right colour, Griffiths. Right, so if I go to the colour purple... Oh, that was a movie, wasn't it? If I go to the colour purple... Now, I'm going to do something slightly different, and I'll show you on this again. I'm going to do my little shapes like that. But then what I'm going to do is on the flower I'm actually going to do a bigger version that comes down. So look out for two different sizes when I actually do it. So let's take that off there. So again I'm going to need a piece of my silicone paper or my wax paper. I'm going to put a little dab of purple on here. Pick up my wax paper. Now if you are struggling with getting divisions on your flowers these plastic piping nails, you can mark them. You could come in with a marker and put marks on the edges. You could put a dot in the centre of this paper if you wanted. Make sure if you're using a pencil or ink that the dot is on the side that's attached to the nail because you don't want any contaminants on your flowers. That way it'll help you with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one little teardrop, two little teardrops. Now what I'm going to do now is three, four, but the fifth one I'm going to do bigger. All the way down, all the way back up. Now, if I take that, I apologise, I've only got orange for centres. If I did this in yellow, however, just look at this, I'll put this in. There you go, guys, we've got a violet. Actually, that orange looks yellow anyway. So we've got a violet. Now, I'm going to do one more variation on that theme, because we seem to be doing quite well with that. So again, a little dot of that. I'm going to pick up. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a zigzag motion and turn at the same time because I want to make almost a bib. So I'm going to come across here. I'm going to do a little ruffle all the way around until I get to the end. 
So I've created a bib shape. Now some of you are probably already going, oh, I know what he's doing. Fine, absolutely right. So I'm above that, I'm going to do one teardrop, another teardrop, and then I'm going to do two teardrops in front of those. Now, as you can see, we've created a pansy. I'm going to pop in and put that orange center in again. There you go. So I've created a pansy. Now, it's important to state at this time that with piped flowers and iced flowers, we are representing the flower. You are not going to get botanically correct when you do um, piped flowers. I tried very hard, and in the book, you'll see that I actually did do um, a stenciled royal icing three-dimensional orchid. I would say that's master level, and it was very hard and very delicate. And even that didn't come anywhere near the real thing. It just represented it. So just remember, if you're doing gum paste flowers, they're going to be botanically correct or as close as you can get them. If you're doing pipe flowers, they will represent the flower. The good thing is you can actually eat them. And you've got no wires, you've got no glazes, there's no stamens put in them. There is a caveat to that, because I'm going to show you an option later on. But know that you can totally eat raw icing flowers, which is fabulous. You've got no worries. Use them as sprinkles, put them on kids' cakes. They love crunching away a bit. You will have a bit of trouble controlling them because they'd be bouncing off the wall with all the sugar they've got. So, who else have I got in here? Hi, Doreen. Hello, Suzanne. Oh, I've lost, I've lost you all. Oh, there you are. Sarah Dayo? Dayo? D-A-Y-O. Not sure how to pronounce that. Again, I apologise. I'm the world's worst with names. Yep, 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 yep. It's nice to see so many familiar faces. Loving that. Right, where does my list say I'm going next? Okay, this is the one you all was asked me for. We're going to look at toothpick roses. Now, I know there are videos out there of me doing them, but what I've done this time is I was able to get Ian to get this close-up camera really focused in and hopefully hopefully you're going to be able to see it really close up. So again, I'm going to go with the pink because I'm finding that showing up really well on this camera. Now, they're called toothpick roses for a reason. They're piped on the toothpick. There's no, no prizes for that. So what you need to do is, first of all, take a toothpick and then take some white vegetable fat and just wipe the slightest little bit on the top of it. You don't want to saturate the toothpick. You just want a little bit on the end. Now, the fattest end of this piping tip is at the base. Now this, I'm going to be very wordy in its description. I'm going to show you a whole one, and then I'm going to tell you how to do it in stages so it doesn't slip down your cocktail stick or toothpick. So I'm going to rest the piping tip on the side of the toothpick, attach a little rope, pull the rope out, turn the toothpick in a clock anti-clockwise direction, stop and then wipe the toothpick down. Now, as you can see, that gives you the tiniest little rosebud. Once you've done that, I normally set them to one side just to dry for like 10, 15 minutes, just because if your icing is too soft, it's gonna slide down. So let me do my total blue Peter moment and swap this out for one I've already done. Now, what I would do is when I'm piping these roses, this size piping bag would probably do 25 or 30 roses. So I'd grease up all of the 25 or 30 toothpicks. I would then set them to one side, pipe all the first row. Now I've done the bud by piping and wrapping it towards me. I'm now going to do three overlapping petals. So I'm going to start below the bud, I'm going to pipe up and over and come back down. So as you can see, I've created one petal. Now I'm going to go halfway back and do the same thing again. Up, over, and down. Then I'm going to go halfway back again. And this petal should start halfway there and wrap around to halfway around the first one. So that gives you my middle size rose. Okay. Now the reason I'm coming down each time is I want to clean the end of the piping tip off onto the toothpick. Now, let's reiterate what I did. I did the first wrapping towards me, which created the bud. I then did three overlapping, which then gave me the first three petals. I'm now going to do three petals, uh, five petals, sorry, in the opposite direction. So again, I'm actually starting below the rows. I'm coming up over the top and down. So this is petal number one. 
wiping on the toothpick so you can see there I've got a nice archway I'm going to come back and I'm going to do that four more times so that's two that's three that's four now number five can go halfway up to the halfway mark of number one and that's how I pipe my miniature roses now what I'm going to do is I want to show you how to dust these for a second well this is just drying off and I want to do that because I want to show you how you can develop it further by doing a further seven petals but to me I find these are the most useful size so let's put that in a little block of styrofoam. Now, once again, if you actually do roses and let them dry, as you saw before, I've got boxes of the things. I never throw away raw icing because I can make them, let them dry totally, put them to one side, keep them dust-free, damp-free, and then you've got them. So let's take one of these roses that we were looking at. Let me lean over the front of you a second, guys. So I'm going to bring in some dust colours. Now, these dust colours are your regular petal dusts. These are your food safe dusts. These are your edible dusts, okay? Now, something to talk about here. If I have a flower that is this pale and I put this colour onto it, it's going to be way too dark. You cannot really blend when it comes to dusting raw icing. It'll show up the texture really badly. So I've got some um, cornstarch or cornflour here. I'm going to take a little bit of the pink I'm going to mix this in so I've got a paler shade of my dust. Okay, as you can see there, then I'm going to take the majority of it off my brush and I'm just going to come in and just dust the centre. As you can see, that just brings it to life. If you find for some reason you've been over forceful with your colour, you can always take a little bit of the white cornstarch, corn flour, and just dust it and it will mute it all back down again. But I like it, just that shade darker in the middle. I think it gives an extra dimension, brings it all to life. And if I actually bring in another one of the same roses, you can see it's really made it pop. It's really made it brought to life. Also, if you're someone who does airbrushing, you can always airbrush the colour into them. Just remember, with raw icing, it is sugar. Um, you saturate it and it's actually going to end up being completely soggy mess. So build up layers of it. Uh, if you want a really dramatic effect, you could have a little bit of alcohol and um, a dust colour and you could paint it if you want a really pungent colour. If you were going for something like a blood red, you might find it very hard to make blood red raw icing. But if you make it quite dark, you can always then paint it afterwards. Um, if you're doing some of those really... Um, ornate cakes you could paint them all gold afterwards or maybe silver if you're going to do that make sure that the icing you pipe is either a yellow or it's a grey colour because that'll be a, a little more forgiving if you're painting a metallic over the top because if you miss any patches the yellow will actually look like part of the gold and the grey will actually look part of the silver so there you go done that now let's move on to something again I'm going to come back show me the little screen Ian so, right, let's just make sure my piping tip hasn't seized up. So here we are, we're back with this little, little rose we did. Now remember, this was one petal piped towards you, which gave you the center. It was three overlapping arches piped towards you, which gave you the next layer of petals. Then the final layer of petals for this side is five overlapping petals and I'm piping away from me. So I reverse the direction of that. Now this time I'm gonna pipe seven overlapping petals to make this even larger so that's one going back halfway each time two three four five six seven that gives me the bigger rose now you could arguably call that a peony as well if you really wanted to get away with it i would say however don't go any bigger than um there you go. Don't go any bigger than seven petals with a 56R because it just it doesn't look right. Now, once these are piped and dried, now I'm going to take a risk here because obviously we know I've just piped this. To remove them from the, um, the toothpick, I would say you only need about an hour's drying time maximum. You could leave them overnight, but if you leave them overnight, the problem is they could stick completely. So I'm going to lift this off actually wet, but you'll see what I'm going to do. I rest my fingers on the petals and I twist the toothpick out. Oh, that didn't come off too bad. There you go. 
So, and that was in a matter of seconds, but it is really warm here. So, that's how I'd leave them, and then I put them on some kitchen paper, kitchen towel, or a bit of sponge to dry totally overnight before I put them in the box. Okay, so let's move that one out of the way. Well, actually, move it. it's gone in the bin, people. It's out of here. Where's my damn cloth? Give me a bit of a clean up here. So, let's show you one of the flowers that when I worked in the bakery in America was one of our favorite flowers to use at raw icing. And the reason we did it is because it was actually so useful we could do a buttonhole with it, a buttonhole carnation. You could do it as um, a cornflower. You could do it as little clumps of coral. If you did an underwater cake and you want to have little clumps of coral, you could use them as bushes on a landscape cake. You could do them as pom-poms on a clown. I mean, lots of different uses for this, and you can do them various different sizes. What do you need? You need a square of wax paper, and you need a toothpick or a cocktail stick. You don't need to put white fat on the top of this, not necessary. So let's choose a colour, Griffiths. Um, num, 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 num. Let's see what we've we got here that looks pretty. Let's use this one. It's a pale colour, so we'll see. If it doesn't work, I'll just do it again. So all I'm doing is the paper is not used till the end anyway. Again, the fattest part is the base. I'm going to bring my toothpick in and I'm going to pipe what I call a blade. So I pipe a line up the toothpick and down the toothpick. Now as you can see it gives me one blade and that's on my toothpick every time I'm wiping the piping tip on the toothpick. Now I'm going to put another two up there that will give me three in total. Two, three. Now this isn't one that you let dry in between you have to pipe this all in one go. So now I'm going to go around and I'm going to put an extra three around the outside of that and then I'm going to keep building each time I'm coming to the toothpick or the cocktail stick. There is no finite numbers on this. You go as large or as big as you want, or you keep going until it starts falling off the piping tip, uh, off the toothpick. Once you've done this, push it through a bit of wax paper, pull it off, and you've got a tiny little button carnation. Now, if you mix your colours up, if you put all the different colours in a bag, you'll get various different colours of these. So let's just pull a purple out and have a look at this done in purple. So, one more time, I've piped a blade, as I call it, directly up, directly down. I'm going to pipe one either side. Purple is probably not the best colour to pipe with a blue board, but you know, forgive me for that, we've done it in orange already. Now, I'm just adding and adding these. If it starts moving around, you think it's going to fall off, that's the time to actually take the wax paper, pop it through, pull it down, and again, you've got a little carnation there. So as I said, I've used these on underwater cakes before now, and I've used them as coral. They've done them in green. They can look like a little bush on um, a landscape cake. I've done them as pom-poms on a clown. I've done them on cookies. I've done them in white, so they look like a little carnation when you do a tuxedo cookie. So again, a very useful way to use up spare roll icing. These do take quite a while to dry, so at least 24 hours before you take them off the wax paper and put them in your box to store them. There you go. Let's move you to one side. Now let's give you a little bit of a break from those a second. Let's move that over there. Let's pull in that rose we did before. And let's pull in a cookie for you. Now, pipe flowers are beautiful. They're a bit time consuming, but they're one of the things you can do in advance. Don't forget, guys, you don't need to do everything at the same time. I could have piped these little roses nine months to a year ahead of time and had them stored in a box and then as soon as an order comes in for something I can use them. So I'm going to take just a basic heart shaped cookie here. I'm going to pull in that leaf tip I've got. Hopefully it hasn't seized up. No, it hasn't seized up. Let's wipe that off. Where are we? So I've got my crocodile smile again. So the large V's are on the side. I'm going to come in and I'm going to pipe, pipe one leaf, come in from the other side pipe another leaf, pop the rose in the middle, there you go, all of a sudden I've got a favour, or I've got a cookie that I can stack out on everyone's plate. Really simple ideas. I've covered this in raw icing, you could have covered it in sugar paste or fondant, or even modelling chocolate. You could have flooded it with water icing instead of raw icing, and I've put little dots around the edge, you could do anything you wish. So another way to use these little flowers, really, really cute. Right, let's go up a grade and let's show you some other tricks. 
So in this plastic piping bag, and I have a plastic piping bag because it's going to be for a bigger flower. I've got a Wilton 124 in here. Um, I can't remember what size I used in the book, but use it size appropriate to whatever you're piping, obviously. Now, I did say I'd show you how I put two different colours in the bag. So where have I put the icing? So, first of all, I've got pink and white because I think these two colours will show up really well as I'm piping this for you because I want you to see some di dynamics in this. So, I'm going to take my pink. Now, for something like this, I do tend to use quite firm wall icing. So, I've got the pink. Now, where the fat part of the piping tip is, which is the bottom, I'm going to come in and I'm going to smear this icing right up the inside of the bag. I'm trying not to block the piping tip. I'm literally, Ian, can we have a close-up of the little one? So you can see, I can still see the piping tip down inside there. All I've done is I've smeared it down the inside. If you leave the camera there, Ian, I will do the next bit here. So now I'm gonna take some of the white icing and take the white icing and I'm gonna put it down the opposite side. Now, what I'm hoping to do now is when I squeeze out the icing, of course, I will actually get two different colours coming out of this bag. So I'll just put that in there. I'm going to squeeze a bit onto a board in a minute, just so you can see what the effect is. And then you'll see how I actually achieve um, the azaleas, which is what I'm going to be piping next. And I did the azaleas for a wedding cake and they looked lovely. So, got my bag, squeeze it all down. Let's bring in that board I was using as a practice shot. So... If I now squeeze onto this board, as you can see, two different colours come out. And that's what I want. Now, I could have done that with any of the petal tips that I had already. Any of the flowers you've seen, I could have done it with two colours, made it much more interesting. So, let's put that to one side. So, right, before we go anywhere else, there's a little bit of prep I have to do. So... Now, when I pipe these azaleas, you can pipe them in two ways. You can pipe them so that they're completely and totally edible, or you can pipe them with a little more realism. And the ones I used for the wedding cake I did, I used stamens in them. And what I did is I got stamens that had glitter on the top of them. It was food safe glitter, so make sure you use food safe glitter. If you're using any inedible item on one of your flowers, make sure the bride or the catering company know who are serving the cake because they have to take those off because food safe laws mean you can't actually eat them. So I just need a gulp of water a minute. Talk amongst yourselves, guys. Cheers. Oh, there you go. That's nice and cold. That must have been out the fridge. Thank you, Susan. Well, Susan's shy, but she won't make any noise now. <laughs> oh, there you go. You can hear the cackle, people. So, uh, anyone else I know on here? Bev, how about daffodils and narcissus? I can't say. I'm not doing them tonight. Sorry. It's really hot and humid in here, and if you want the centre of a narcissus or a daffodil to stand up in this heat, it's not going to happen. But maybe one day I'll do it in the future, but just not tonight. Limited time. We've only got about 18 minutes left, and they are watching me because they want to go home. So, where was I up to? Okay, right. We need to go back to this little baby, which is the lily nail. So... Let's go close up again. So now this is a slightly different flower to make, but it gives you a more three dimensional and not one that's flat. So if I put that to one side, this is where I'm gonna need the kitchen foil. Now baking foil, kitchen foil, I find the heavy duty one is a lot more useful than the thin one. First thing I want to do is I want to take the slightest bit of white vegetable fat and wipe it onto this. You don't have to do this stage, I just find I get better results if I do. So as you can see, that's almost non-existent on there. It's just a really thin coating. I'm then gonna lay this on top of there and push the top in. And what this is doing is it's creating a former for me. This seems like a very large piece of foil. Excuse me, I'll just cut this down a bit because it'll become inoperable if I don't do it. You can see I didn't think about the size of this one. I did this. I just did this. So there you go. Let's drop that in yon bin. So, as you can see, I've now pushed this in. What I want to do is I want to curve these edges around the bottom area of this 
just to anchor it in place and when I pull it out as you can see I've created a former for a flower and that's all the top bit is for it's just there to push the foil into a shape because you want this all nice and flat so that the icing doesn't go between the creases so let's do something a little bit spectacular with this shall we so I've got my large piping tip this is the one two four I've got the fattest bit down in down the base I'm going to come down I'm going to pipe all the way from the inside up and over doing a little bit of a wiggling action and down I'm going to repeat this another four times now you have to be careful because you're going to build up icing in the middle of this flower there's a way of dealing with it don't worry it's just that you need to make sure you don't build up too much so I've got my basic shape what I do then is I normally take a slightly damp paintbrush or I would if the one was handy and I come in and I want to thin out this by pressing it down giving it a bit of shape so this is stage one okay I'm going to repeat this for you in a second anyway because I want to see it done twice now my next stage is I'm going to take a number 44 star tip and I'm going to come in and directly into the middle I'm going to pipe a bit of spike and that would be my finished flower now once you've done it you can then peel this away lift this off totally and set this to one side to dry this is going to take between five and six days to dry depending on your ambient temperature I'm sure if you're in the middle of Texas or in the middle of a desert it's going to dry a bit quicker okay but you need to let it fully dry so let's do that whole process one more time for you and then I can actually show you what we need to do with the stamens so I've chosen some tan colored stamens here as I said for the cake I did I actually didn't use tan I actually used oh, excuse me I actually used um, ones with little glitter pieces on the end as I said it was an edible piece I did ask him to take it off anyway so right I know that my piece of foil is too big so let's give it a bit of a haircut before I even start you watch I'm probably going to cut too much off now right. that's what we're going to do it so a little bit of my white vegetable fat right in the middle put put it onto the top of the cup section and push in the other section then just fold the edges down so they don't get in the way when you pipe then you can take the top bit out and that gives you your former then we're going to come in remember the fattest part is the base I'm going to pipe wiggly line up and over up and over up and over can you see me yes you can up and over and the last one's a fiddly one up and over then I go in with a slightly damp paintbrush probably a smaller paintbrush than I'm using but I, I do like larger paintbrushes probably because I've got big hands so I'm going to just paddle I want to get that a little more hollowed out because that's a really large amount of raw icing if you find you build up too much in there you can always go in and scoop a bit out before you put the little cone in the middle so again I'm going to use the number 44 star tip and I'm going to come in from the center pipe a little cone now if you wanted a totally edible flower of course that's where you would stop but if you want to do a little bit more realistic look oh I can't pick up the stamens I'm having stamen problem come here you there you go so I'm just going to come in and put a few of these stamens in here now you can only imagine that the ones I did were white and when they were white with little bits of glitter in the middle they looked absolutely gorgeous so you can do any color combination you wish come on Griffiths get it together so there you go so the steam steam is just give it a little bit of a realism and then as I said you carefully peel this off and you can sit it down somewhere sometimes old egg tray egg boxes or egg trays is a good place to sit these now I just want to show you quite quickly I can't do it with this because obviously it's wet if you're going to take the foil off after five to six days 
don't pull the foil out. Peel the foil down. It's as if you're peeling a banana. And what will happen is it will peel down away from the petals. If you find the very base of it isn't fully dried, that's fine. It'll be pretty much dry. You can just take the foil off and turn the flower upside down to finish off. As I said, that's quite a large amount of icing in there. So let's put that down over there. Right, what are we up to next? Right, the last thing I want to show you today. So who likes Christmas? Nobody answered, right? Nobody likes Christmas, we're cancelling it. No, we're not at all. So, um, something I did in the book for the Christmas theme, which I really liked, was I did my version of piped pine cones. Now, all I've done on here is there's a little bit of white vegetable fat on the end of this toothpick. I've actually taken, where is it? There, you can see that now. I've taken some brown uh, modeling paste, something that's got tylo into it. You could use gum paste if you wished, something that will hold its shape and firm up. Okay, so there you go, that's that one. Oh, I forgot, I've got to do the daisy. Remind me, I've got to do a daisy for you. Um, now, I've got... Where's it gone, Griffiths? There you go. I've got some brown icing in here, and I've got the 56 again. Okay, so we're back to the 56R. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach here as if it was a rose. I'm going to pipe really quite a tight spiral and come down. So I'm just doing a little bit of a bud on the top of that. Brown's not the best colour I'm seeing. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way down this all the way to the bottom. And I'm just doing overlapping petals like I did with the rose. I'll turn it round for you in a second. We'll do it from another angle. So as you can see, I'm starting to build it up. So I'm coming here and I'm working my way all the way down. Once you get a bit proficient, you can do these quite quickly. All the way back. And what I'm doing is I'm piping a tiny little pine cone. Now there are moulds out there for these sort of things. But I just find I don't always have one. I've got an option of using it more icing. I've done these in white as well and put some granulated sugar on the tips just to give the idea of frost. So, and take a little more time than I'm doing. Obviously, you don't have all these people watching you when you're doing it at home, but keep going all the way to the bottom. I'll turn it around so you can see the bottom of this in a second. So, as you can see by the, where are we? I've gone all the way to the toothpick, and as you can see, that will give you a really, really cute little pine cone. There you go. As I said before, these things represent the flower. They're not meant to be botanically correct, but that's a cute little one. You can even spray that with some luster dust or even some gold dust, and that'll give you another little feature to use. Right, the one that I missed that I did want to show you, and I completely forgot about until I saw the piping tip, Right, everything we've used so far is a 56R or it's a 124 by Wilton. This time I'm going to use a 57S. The difference is with this, as you can see, the piping tip is straight up and down. It's not curved in any way. Now, I'm going to use the metal flower nail and I'm not going to put wax paper on it because I'm piping a white flower. So just know that in real world terms I would have come in, I would have put a little dob of icing, I would have gone in and I would have done that. But I'm piping white on white because I'm doing a daisy so I want, I want you to be able to see everything I'm doing. Just just clean that off. Now this is the one where I said we changed the, the piping tip. So the fattest part is now the outside of the petals. If I come in from above and I pipe a teardrop, you'll see what I mean. Now what you need to do is you need to go all the way around this flower nail, piping into the middle. Can you still see me? Yeah, you can. Now it doesn't matter if there's a bit of a hollow in the middle, because guess what? Daisies have got a big old centre to them. This is the same method I would use if I was going to do a gerber as well, although I do a bigger flower now. I'm just going to touch a few of those down just to make sure they're lying even. Then I'm going to take that softened raw icing that I had and I'm going to pipe a nice big bulb in the middle of this. 
a little damp paintbrush, just touch that top down so it's flat. And there you go, and that's how I've done the daisy. So another way you could just use up spare icing, that will be on wax paper or silicone paper. I'd then pipe it, leave it to one side to dry overnight, peel it off, and I have them already ready to go. So that leaves that there. Right, that actually, guys, got me to the end of my list, which I think is pretty good going, as we had a humongous list to do. So, right, a few things just wanted to reiterate if you came in late. Um, Shannon Bond, welcome. Shannon is one of our new doctors on, on the site. Um, Shannon's going to focus on buttercream for us. Shannon is actually American-based, so um, Shannon can give you a lot of the info if you're from America. Also, we're quite lucky. American Cake Decorating Magazine and Rebecca, the editor, have approached us, and they actually want to do a feature now and then on Cake Doctor because they can see what we're trying to do. We're trying to help and support, and they want to be part and parcel of that that whole ethos of helping people. So you're going to find periodically there'll be a page or maybe two pages within the magazine which will be Q&As on most of the most asked questions and you'll have feedback. And I know in the next issue, I believe it's the next issue, Rebecca, forgive me if I've got it wrong, I think the next issue is the buttercream issue and in the buttercream issue we'll see Shannon for the first time and she's going to give you lots of interesting and helpful tips on that which is fabulous. Thank you for joining and welcome Shannon. Um, what else do you need to know? Oh. Um, the sponsors of Cake Doctor, which is KTC Designs, are doing a giveaway. We've got three sets of these books to give away. That's um, Ice Flowers 1, which is out of print at the moment, so there's only three left and we've got them. And Border Inspirations 1 and 2, which is my award-winning book on pipe borders, which I'm very happy to be sharing with you. Uh, what we want you to do is, if you pop across to www.ktcdesigns.com, forward slash newsletter, there you go. Ian is so on the ball tonight. He may be small, but he's powerful. Um, go across there, sign up for the newsletter. Now, what we want to do, in fairness to those who have already signed up for the newsletter, one set will go to someone who's already on the newsletter. All of these are going to be cho chosen at random. The other two sets will go to new sign-ups. Um, this will run till 5.45 Greenwich Mean Time tomorrow, which is the 13th of June for us here in Britain. Um, at that point, if you're the lucky recipient, you'll get a message from us asking for your postal address. It's good anywhere in the world, guys. So wherever you are, we will send it out to you. I'm happy about that. Um, don't forget another thing is um, Cake Doctor isn't just about Cake Doctor the group or Cake Doctor the Q&As you see on the Facebook page. There is actually a blog page as well. So if you go to www.cakedoctor, which is one word, dot blog, on there you'll see resources. We're trying to add as much as we can as we go along, but to be honest with you, it's very busy for the doctors at the moment. We're trying to write when we can to support you, but you're all doing such a good job of supporting each other. There's not a lot for us to do at the moment. We do get a few specifics. Um, it's worth periodically scrolling back through the Facebook group page because there's some very interesting reading in there, guys. I must admit, even I'm learning stuff and I've been doing this for over 40 years. So, lovely resource there for you. I think that's about me done. Um, remember, the raw icing recipe is in the resources there. It's written, a free download. There's also a video of me doing it all. That's what I've used tonight. Also remember, use dust or liquid colours. Try to avoid gels or paste if you're doing flowers in raw icing because the glycerin or glycerides will keep attracting all the moisture and your flowers will crumble. Other than that, I think I've just about run out of puff. As I said, sorry I didn't get round to answering a lot of the questions. If there were actually questions to ask in the first place, lots of people saying hi, lots of hearts, lots of thumbs up, lots of a funny woman with glasses popping up. Hi, Noreen. So Noreen's on holiday at the moment. So um, lots of things happening. I will try my damnedest before I go to bed tonight to go through and answer any questions that come up. Thank you for joining us. I'm not sure we've got in store for you next month. Hopefully something exciting and new. Um, keep an eye out and happy piping, guys. Enjoy. See you next time. Bye now.